Good evening, morning, night. Um, Cosmos, wherever, <laughs> wherever the dual army's at. Um, we have arrived at 46 and 2. The iconic Justin Chancellor song that, no, Justin wrote that line. Paul uh, wrote Anima, Push It. Stink Fist and H. So, you know, give credit where credit is due to Paul. I've been with all you guys, and every reaction channel there is the tool army just floods them like the floodgates are open. I mean, like you threw Gizmo into the ocean, and Gizmo is tool, which said, put the reaction channel uh, thumbnail, and you put tool on it. It's like putting Gizmo in the ocean. Wait a few minutes. They'll be there. Although, I'm an OGT and I got a hair metal guy here reacting to the damn tool. <laughs> we're not getting any engagement. So so we're going to do 46 and 2. And hopefully it turns out good. Um, it's so going to be hard to top eulogy. We did that. That was the last tool reaction that we did. That was and uh, that probably that runs to people off. It, it, it was an hour, but. Eulogy right. guy, you know, I mean, that was the first real song where Tool showed their instrumentation and the meaning of it, and, or the non-meaning of it, whatever you want to say. That was a lot to talk about. I tried to be short. And honestly, I think with a song like that, if you're, I don't see the point of doing like a nine-minute reaction to Eulogy. Like, there's a lot to discuss. I think to me, the longer the, re like, there's some people I'm sure that just are padding time, but with Tool, you don't want a low-effort reaction. You don't just want someone to be like, yeah, I liked it. Thanks, like and subscribe. So. Well, I do feel for the people that are on, in my Tool chats who have ADHD really bad and cannot sit there that long. They right. want to, but they just mm -hmm. can't. Yeah, and some so people say they've had busy home lives or whatnot. I do understand the reasoning. So we'll try to keep this one nice and efficient. What did you say? Uh, I'm sorry. Home lives? What? I'm sorry. I said some people may have like really busy home lives, kids, something like that. So, you know, taking 40 minutes oh, yeah. to, or like an entire hour to sit down for a reaction might be a bit of a challenge. Yeah. I mean, especially if you got more than one channel you like to watch. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, this song, uh, OGL's heard it. Um, not, we've never broke it down. It's, um, I would say Justin Swan song, like I said, and um, it's about metamorphosis and or alchemy or transmutation or evolution and chromosomes. You know? And yeah, well, that, those are yeah, hormones, testosterone and estrogen, estrogen Y chromosomes. Yeah, we all have male and female chromosomes, what I was trying to say. Yeah. And there are hermaphrodites who have both. And you know, there's an old, old, old legend that, or ideology or whatever, that we started as one being who could self-replicate. Like, I think octopuses do that, or there are animals in the wild that do that. And I think, yeah, 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 yeah asexual reproduction, like a lot of single cells organisms do it, do it. It's called budding. It's like, yeah, so like, we're, the, we're the, um, yeah, like growing pot. Exactly. Thank you, man. Hybrid. Yeah, I'd want it. And your, your intuition. Man always says you got to get to both sides. And he can't have sympathy for a woman. He don't have the cycle and he can't be a woman. But to write songs that speak to everyone, not just a male audience or a female audience, which there are guys that like girl songs. And But have you ever heard a really girly song that a bunch of guys like? So, and vice versa. Um, so, you know, be in touch with your intuitive side, intuitive side, and that is why Tool incorporates the red and the blue, and it makes purple, because purple goes way back before the whole, we'll call it the Barney thing. Um, it's way older than that. Like, the swastika is way older than, not that N-word <laughs> for the, we're not allowed yeah, to say on YouTube. The word that make it as demonetized. So we'll the history, Yahtzee, the Yahtzee history. Uh. The Yahtzee. 
<laughs> we will try so, not to make this reaction 46 minutes and two seconds, I promise. We will try. Yeah. But no guarantees. I try not to push tool down everybody's fucking throat, but it doesn't work. Does it, Greg? <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. I meet you, Maynard, every day. Beautiful. Adam Palmy. My own numb shadow. Piss me off. So I was going to say that's a strange place for you to pause because I could tell they were building to something there. I keep hearing Danny and one of these little toms in, in my left ear, and I'm hearing Justin in the right ear. And Adam's doing these little prickly things like he done in um, Eulogy. I've never noticed that, the what Adam's doing in the left ear. And Maynard is literally centered. Like, Oddly enough, um, that's crazy. Never uh, really noticed that. I didn't even notice the production. I'm not going to lie. I have to listen to that a bit more closely. I was just noticing that like, that's a really, really nice bass line. Like you hear at first, it almost sounds like a uh, like a clean tone guitar. It's got that you know nice, like round, robust sound that you get from a bass. Uh, really nice. <clears throat> Adam... You know, he starts off palm muting to complement it. Then he does uh, get his more like textured sounds. Just Adam you doing the Adam both. thing. Huh? It was in drop D, but I got you. And then, uh, no, sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say he's playing the guitar over the bass when it sounds thicker. Yeah. Um, there's a, uh, there's a bit that almost sounds like a, uh, like a distorted power chord or something coming in, but it, like it sort of fades in and goes out real quick. It's almost like a, like a growl or like a clap of thunder, which I thought was really cool. Uh, Maynard's uh, vocals in this one, he's doing the thing where he starts off very, very quiet. So, Course, so you got the lyrics pulled up here so I can follow along. Uh, it's a really nice melody. I, I basically I like how everything syncs up here. I like how the bass line and the, the texture of guitar work and Maynard's vocal melody. I just like how they all sync up. And they're just sort of... I use water imagery a lot for some reason when I describe Duel, but it's just basically like riding a very gentle wave. But it does sound like that there's going to be some turbulence <laughs> picking up very shortly. It's... Um... Join in, join in, child. Now my old shadow. Um, 
Is that what it says? Join in, join in, shadow. join in my own numb shadow. Join yeah. My, tub, my shadow moves. Yeah. yeah. I've been. Oh, I've been. Yeah. Digging crawling right on my, through my old numb shadow. Yeah. I've been crawling on my belly, clearing out what could have been. I've been wallowing in my own chaotic, confused, and insecure delusion. I want to feel the change consume me, feel the outside turning in. Or a word, wait a minute. I want a peace to cross me over or a word to guide me in. I want to feel the change consume me. I want to know what I've endured in. So, I think I fucked that up, man. I've been crawling on my belly, clearing out what could have been. I've been wallowing in my own confused and insecure delusions for a peace to cross me over for a no word, word to guide me in. Yeah. I want to feel the changes coming down. I want to know what I've been, well, I've been hiding. hiding yeah. Yeah. My shadow. Yeah, I like the line. I've been crawling on my belly, belly, clearing out what could have been. I think that's okay. Like thinking about that in terms of like ascertaining like behavioral patterns that may lead you to bad outcomes is one thing, but just sort of dwelling on things that could have happened but didn't. That's a very, very destructive habit. It really it it serves to depress you and nothing else. So. Well, the shadow manner is represented is definitely the Carl Jung theory. Yeah, I was gonna um, say. It's Young. And he uses it in server too. There's a shadow just behind me, shouting every step I take, waiting like a stalking butler, pointing every finger at me. So it's a it's a reoccurring theme, and I mean it should be because tools a lot about you know crucifying your ego and um you know, embracing your feelings and and all the things and and. Dark imagery being just as important as the light to have balance to have yin and yang, and literally the light of the yin is the, the shadow is the yang. And you no. taught me that the black is the all colors put together, and white white is the absolute color. So yeah, um, I like that. Again, I don't want to draw this reaction out unnecessarily, but I do just want to point out one thing that I really have always appreciated about tool. Um, there's a, always seem to be like there's a lot of songs that talk about that are things going on in the outside world. This is going wrong. That's going wrong. We need to do something about this. This and I understand that. Like normally, the heart's in, in the right place. Um, I've always said that you save a world or you, you solve a situation one person at a time, and you do that. And then to do that, you know, each person has to become the best person they can become, and you do that essentially by, you know, you have to have that inner battle. So to speak. You have to have that inner dialogue. I guess battle is a combative term, but you have to have that inner dialogue. You have to be self-aware. You have to be, like I said, in, in touch with your feelings. You have to be in control. I, I appreciate the fact that Tool puts that emphasis on the, the internal dialogue as opposed to obsessing about what's going on outside because what goes on outside is usually a reflection of what is going on in. So major, and I especially like the fact that... Um, it's done in a very introspective way. Like a lot of uh, metal bands deal with it in a very aggressive sense, which I understand. But I, And obviously Tool can be very aggressive when they choose to. But it's, I like the fact that they are all about the introspection and sort of um, mapping out the darkness or mapping out your own psyche so that you can be a better person. So, major thumbs up. And if you're any familiar with Maynard's work, you know, he's, he walks up like he talks. He's been very, very successful in you know, a couple of things. <clears throat> I like how he just referenced like three tool songs, a perfect circle song, and a pussy song <laughs> in his description. I'm not even sure if he realized it, but he definitely did. That was cool. All right, tool army. You fucking mad at me. I don't care. Starting over. <laughs> I don't care. Send more money. Buy my new ah. That's next, by the way. <laughs>
Army. Hey, my friend. All right, so um, as predicted, things uh, definitely picked up. Uh, two computers, people. Don't do that. Uh, I love how he was using the same, oddly enough, like a, it's called a shadow valve at the end of shadow. I shadow. Uh, so I think he did it on the first two and then when the, uh, no, nope, first three. My shadow, my shadow. Changes coming through my shadow. There was always that shadow. Uh, it just adds that little extra emphasis to the word. And then when he said my shadow shedding skin, shadow valve disappeared there. Almost like it was shed, oddly enough. Um, the softer vocal melody here, like a lot of times when Maynard does this, he'll do like little runs and things at the end of words. This is actually very straightforward. Uh, even like not lingering so much on the uh, ends like he usually does. It's, just, it's very precise. It's There's some odd rhythmic accents here and there, but it's just straightforward melodies I've heard him sing. That is like, I've been crawling on my belly. Yeah. But it still feels very conversational, very speech-based, you know? Um, and <laughs> that riff is just absolutely killer. You know, this is uh, Adam's... Mm -hmm. I said he, Adam does so much... Uh, his work, his parts evolve so much through the songs. You know, he's doing the palm muting in the beginning. He does, like, the textural sounds and whatnot. Now he's just kicking out a crazy-ass heavy riff. Great. Will's got riffs for days. Yeah, I think there was too much crescendo and, and, and bravado in that to be spoken, but I know what you mean. He's not... Yeah. It's like telling a story. Like a, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, like it's, if you're it's subtle. A really good storyteller will add those accents and the, you know, uh, to, to their words. They won't just read it you know, flat. But just like I said, it's just like the, the runs at the end and stuff like that, some of the Maynardisms, if you will, aren't as evident here. Again, it's more speech-based than I'm, I've heard from him before. Well, I'm not sure. Like what, eulogy, yep. almost every every word had like one of those little runs at the end and whatnot. So. Yeah. No, I, I know what you're saying. I, I'm, yeah. I've never put that way. Um, and, I, I, and again, once you learn to sing it, you can hear it a lot better. Because actually, Mary's voice never really gets that much louder or softer. I know everybody, it seems to, but it doesn't. He's just singing softer, as, as you did point out. Uh, I don't really know what that is when you start one, the beginning on the constant crawling on my belly. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what that is. I don't know if that's called. Check it out.
I love those lines. Oh, Jill, will you read that part? Let's see. Um, I choose to live and to grow. Is that the part you're talking about? Mm -hmm. No. I choose to live and to grow, take and give and to move, learn and love and how and to cry, kill and die and be paranoid and to lie, hate and fear and to do what it takes to move through. I choose to live and to lie, kill and give and to die, learn and love and to do what it takes to step through. See my see my shadow changing, stretching up over me, soften this old armor, hoping I can clear the way by stepping through my shadow, coming out the other side, step into the shadow, forty six and two are just ahead of me. Yeah, like that's so descriptive, like See me stepping through my shadow, and it's mm. stretching up and over me. It softens this old armor, open, and I can clear the way. That's a, it's beautiful. It's very descriptive. <coughs> and very honest about, I choose to kill and love and learn and cry and die and be paranoid and to lie. And it's pointing out all the negative emotions along with the and actions not just emotions yeah um actions we do in life every one of us lie learn love cry die kill in some manner or another mm -hmm. you, you kill somebody's buzz <laughs> i mean if you've ever pulled weeds out of your garden you're killing something so mm -hmm. you step on moment cracking and broke mm -hmm. mama back <laughs> but so we we did a reaction previously today where we were basically trying to figure out how to describe what uh, vanessa amorosi was doing vocally i want to figure out if, how to describe what adam jones is doing with his guitar it's a sound that he pulls out a lot and it's it sounds it, this visual i always conjure up is like being sucked into a black hole All right this one actually felt like it had a bit more of a whirl to it so this was almost like a whirlpool as I would like to know what he's doing to create that sound. He uses it fairly consistently. I'm always happy when it pops up. That to me is like the one of the Adam Jones signature sounds, that and his palm muting stuff. Um, but yeah, it's <laughs> it's just a great textural sound. And you know, it, it, it's sort of great for the uh, thematically. It's great for the lyrics of Tool. I, I, I can't like tell you how he's doing it or the technique mm -hmm. because I personally don't think it is a technique. It's literally sacred geometry. It's it's using number patterns and alternating them in a way which by nature's sake causes a golden ratio or a spiral or a dizzying whirlwind effect, which is what a spiral is. So I know they have... Uh, literally worked with tones and key patterns and Danny's drums are set up like nobody else's uh, they all call it satanic because it's alchemy it's like a, a way that the drum gets set up that is even the what their practice studio is set up in a way where it's G sacred geometrically correct and if people are right that's how they built the pyramid and why they built the pyramid okay. for sound resonance and spiritual enlightenment through sound and vibrations like the spine thing i told you about mm -hmm. and all that so anyway that's why i think it sounds differently than but yet he's not really doing anything special i will say this and i this is a reference that no one will understand but uh, I uh, discovered a band way back when called Mephisto Walls. It was in a genre called gothic rock or whatnot, but their guitarist, whose name was like Bari Bari or something like that, did some similar thing as far as like his work being very textural and very spacey. His sound didn't have as much distortion, but he did have a similar like weird black hole effect as well. But that's that's the only other one that I've heard it sounded like that. So, again, major props to Adam. Like I said, I, I love Adam's work. He's always so... Uh, always adds interesting sonic colors to tool sound and yeah. uh, i like how the intensity on the vocals here is picking up towards the end you get that you know those uh, rhythmic patterns that maynard is known for and if 
you probably already told me this. The forty six and two. What is that referencing? Well, we had forty two and two chromosomes when we were in our the previous stage of evolution, like okay. Homo erectus and all these. I'm not sure that's the right name, but before we became as Bill Hicks talks about, we eat mushrooms and learned how to talk and laugh and got conscious. Um, you've seen that bit, right? Where he, yes, <laughs> <laughs> <It's like laughing. laughs> so he goes on forever. Like, like, no other comedian would have done it that long, but I think no. he's trying to show a very long period of time in a fairly short time period, but uh, yeah, it's a uh, it it we evolved and we we gained two more chromosomes and there are two more empty slots if you will in our dna strand ah, where literally proven it's there we don't know why and right we do know from science that the previous evolution so this is why all of tools music is talking about Going to the next level of the game. Okay. Leveling up, if you will. Spiral out. Go so to... Um, it's ever been. <laughs> so to use as dorky a term as po or an analogy as possible, it's like we have two extra slots left in our DNA or makeup or whatnot, but we have, we're still, as a species, waiting to acquire, waiting to acquire the experience points the slot in there and you know we have advanced so much technology oh yeah and it has a lot to do with fluoride and the fact that they're matting shut our third eye and obviously the psychedelics were put here for a reason mm -hmm. <laughs> they um <laughs> mushrooms are the only thing that breathes air and emits carbon dioxide but yet it isn't alive we always call it fun guy <laughs> hey man you got some fun guy because <laughs> it's fun guy <laughs> of course thought you were a fun guy yeah i kind of got a mushroom head too so. but um yeah i mean it's um uh, again it's the only thing i've ever done i've done <laughs> my list of drugs i had not done be a lot shorter and it's the only one that doesn't feel like a drug. It feels like you just opened the door and went outside of the outside. I know they've, also, they've also done like experiments that shown that things like mushrooms or like um, uh, psychedelics can really help with things like PTSD um, without the, you know, without the side effects of addiction and, and whatnot that the, the stuff they're currently using as but as, as we mentioned before, you know, those in power want to stay in power. And if a population becomes empowered and doesn't need them, then where do they go? You know, I have a video real quick. It's in the, it's in the playlist. So, uh, I don't know. I'll try to put it in the description here. If I remember, and I, I ate mushrooms. I hadn't done it like 20 years. I found tool on acid in 93. I had a party with a Vietnam vet shooting through the ceiling and shit. Anyway, it's fucking crazy. That's they, were, they were playing Slayer and Pantera and, and all this and you know, Guar and like the first speed metal or death metal or heavy metal or mm -hmm. whatever the hell all these genres are. Very That's aggressive, what. primal sounding stuff. I got you. But it was just called heavy metal then. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah the and, splintered into eight million subgenres. Yeah. Right, and and you know, I didn't know a lot of the songs. I knew those bands. I mean, I was more into Steve Miller and Eagles and Pink Floyd and you know Skinner and Zeppelin and all that Sabbath. But I heard a song, Jesus Christ, won't you come save my life? And I'm like, guys, what the fuck, man? We just went from you know, Satanism and, and burning fucking not burning crosses, that's the wrong damn organization. <laughs> You know what I'm saying, though, upside down crosses and shit. To now we're wanting Jesus to save our life. Uh, nah, man, that's the opiate of the masses. That's kind of like sarcasm. That's how I found tool. So, anyway, I'm in this damn. I ate mushrooms and 
all the people I know that I love are buried in the cemetery, and it's not far from here. And I ride around and talk, tell that story of how I found Tool, and it's really interesting. And when I got home and wrote the description, it's still there. And it says, as I am writing this description right now, just know I am still tripping my balls off. But I'm not going to edit this because I do not edit my life. <laughs> I swear to you. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's real good. It's real good. Sorry, y'all. So real quick, guys, I realize this reaction may not be as quick and brief as we intended. Hell we'll it, try man. To, uh, we'll try to wrap it up in an efficient manner here, but uh, here's the deal. He's an OGT. He's got so many experiences when it comes to Tool, and I'm new to the band, So, and I, I love sonically interesting music, and Tool is definitely that. So, I mean, that's the reason why you love Tool, right? There's a lot to talk about, lyrically, musically, conceptually. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're sorry, but you know, the band's good, so we're gonna talk about it. But it's progressed, sir. Man, at the concert, too, we're just tell me, girls, tell me you got the biggest wrench I've ever seen. <laughs> Thank you, girl. You validated my wrench for once. <laughs> Danny's about to go off. Does Tool know how to close up a song or what? <laughs> Damn. Those drum fills. One time we... Oh, that was fucking amazing. But that I know there's a guitar in the bass, but I always thought that was the guitar. But if you listen, Adam comes in, that's the bass. Mm -hmm. There's Adam.
Yeah, that was quite a bit of sonic chaos towards the end there. Yeah, Danny going absolutely nutty. Just, um, yeah, his timing is just ridiculous. Like, even when he's not, like, demonstrating his, you know, speed and power, just his ability to hit things at weird accents and that sort of thing, it's just mind-boggling. I'm not, I don't have the best sense of rhythm, I don't play drums, anything like that, so I can only imagine, like, even, I think even a seasoned drummer would look at that and be like, uh, not well Danny's Danny's, thing, man, Danny's three major influences were Neil Peart. Right. John Bonham. He's pretty good. Yeah. And um the drummer for Black Sabbath. The one okay. into the void. Bill Ward. Yeah. yeah. Bill Ward. And John Bonham was the only drummer there who had the big gong type mm-hmm. Chinese, yeah. whatever that is, behind him. And Danny's got one. That's what Mary puts a dildo over his face. His damn, the young, the whatever, man. Not the young beater, but that ain't nothing right. He's um, influenced by the best. He's become the best. That's. I, I I don't think there's a whole lot of argument anymore that Danny's not the goat of drummers. Yeah. Um, now, I'm sure that uh, Eric uh, uh, in Porta is. Amazing, he's fast. Him and Justin do a thing where it's just bass and guitar, and they're in a room full of mirrors. It tells you when it comes on, this could cause seizures. It's uh, it about did me, and I don't even have seizures, but uh, about to do some flashback anyway. And all I can say is, I'm thankful to be alive when Tool was making music because I think 200 years from now. People will really say, wow, that band was different. They were doing something nobody else was doing. And they practiced a lot, a lot. Kind of aggravates Maynard, really. But I think he wrote the lyrics for the Pernocchio in 11 days. (laughs) Took him 14 years to write it. I think it was 11 days. It wasn't long. Disappointment right. me again. Where discipline is good, and you know, crafting a song like this, musically speaking, I can see how that taking time. Writing is like a weird thing. Sometimes if you take too long to write something, the inspiration dilutes. So you kind of got to get that out quickly. But yeah, I just I just love the wave of sonic chaos that they were riding towards the end there with Danny's drums and Adam's squawking guitars and the intensity of Mater's vocals picking up. Yeah, I always love how Tool always likes to sprint towards that finish line. And then you know, close things off literally with a bang. And how, um, as two fans, we absolutely love to just sit there and laugh when someone says, Tooly hard, too heavy. Okay. Maybe not in the six minutes you listened to, but the other six minutes was harder than your whole fucking album. <laughs> but I mean, you can't get much thicker, meatier, deep, punch you in the just sound than what they give you when they want to. Well, the thing is, is, they're not trying to be super heavier than thou all the fucking time, because if you're heavier than thou all the fucking time, that becomes every bit as monotonous as if you're never heavy. So yeah, that tool definitely understands dynamics and contrast. and The, the softer, introspective fits the beginning made that sonic chaos at the end jump out that much more. So, yeah. <laughs> so in a way, it, it, it's much you know, heavier to be able to you know, ride that entire dynamic spectrum than it and is just to crazy, sit on one, one end of it. Yeah, and the crazy thing is there was no lead in there, there was no runs, there was no it was literally the same riff the whole song. Mm-hmm. Done in layers though. Mm-hmm. Heavy, palm, open picking I mean, open, like it was the same riff the whole song. <laughs> the guitar and the bass. Now the drums was doing what the hell? Wow! I mean, that was <laughs> that is what Numa will become. Yeah, become Numa. So, yeah, I'm um, probably a fucking hell of a long reaction here. Four, 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 four. Four, <laughs> four fours. Feels, feels good. Well, we're gonna talk a lot. Just watch it in sections. <laughs> but seriously, those of you that are watching, thank you. We appreciate it. You know, I. It's really enjoyable to do these reactions. Number one, because Tool is a fascinating band. 
And number two, it's something I can share with my brother over here. So that's awesome. Another great thing to doing a reaction channel can bring. But I mean, yeah, the buildings aren't hurt. Our channel's doing great, but I, I just I hear this from people and other creators. Um, fucking comments all the time. You know, like how can you be? How can you react to a tool song in five more minutes than what the song is? Yeah. So anyway, we're just trying to stroke you guys' ego. So we're doing. we can make a forty-minute <laughs> reaction out of a three-minute song. Like, trust me, the <laughs> tool's gonna stretch us out a bit. That's just what they do. So, and it's what we do, and we love what we do, and we love what yeah. tool does. We're stretching up and over us. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Because <Exactly. laughs> it's not enough right. anymore, damn it. <laughs> we had a lot yeah. to say. We had a lot of nothing to say. <laughs> You'll miss us. <laughs> we hope you'll um, miss us. Yeah. All right. I think there's a storm coming over again, so I'm yeah. going to... Um... Thank you all so much. Don't you step out of line, but we will be here for the next reaction, for the next video. Again, Don't thank you all for joining us. We appreciate it. I'm enjoying this journey. Hopefully, Danny is as well. And uh, let me see what's next on the old itinerary here. Well, it'd be a filler song there. Um, and that old penis song. All right. I'm pretty sure. Uh, I hate getting old. 46 and 2. Yes, sir. Hooker with a penis is next. All right. That's not going to get us demonetized, is it? No. We just cannot right. put penis in the damn thumbnail. <laughs> and I've got a potato for it. No. Okay. <laughs> it's a dictator. <laughs> I see what you did there. All right, guys. Thank you very much. Mental health is real. Take care of yourselves so you can take care of each other. And music is your best support group. Listen to awesome music whenever you can. Good. And you know, no amount of guns or muscle. We'll let you cross the river. So join hands. We'll cross it together. Or get a boat. That also helps. Don't you fucking lie. Learn to swim. <laughs>